Hey, what's going on YouTube? Welcome to another Preseason 8 League of Legends Champion Guide. Today, I'll be covering Support Thresh, the Chain Warden. What delightful agony we shall inflict. Alright, so let's hop right into this guide by looking at Thresh's pros and his cons. So Thresh is a champion with some really strong engage and disengage. He's got some very good crowd control and even has scaling AP and armor from his passive. He gets stronger as the game progresses. Because of this, as long as he's picking up his souls, he's going to be a naturally tanky champion and he's even a playmaking support as well because he does have a hooking ability somewhat similar to Blitzcrank. That means as long as you can land your hooks over and over again, you can really influence the game. For your last pro, Thresh even has a lantern that can easily save his teammates. If they're caught in a bad position and you are behind them, simply throw it out and they can grab it to jump towards you. Now Thresh however needs some team communication. Your team really has to be on the same page as you to use your lantern effectively, and they really have to follow up on your hooks. You have some very long cooldowns, and since you are pretty skillshot oriented, you're pretty hard to master as well. Then finally, although you are a very tanky playmaker, you don't do much damage yourself, so you really rely on your teammates following up and doing their damage. For your runes, you want to go for Resolve and Sorcery, grabbing Aftershock as your keystone. After immobilizing an enemy champion, you'll gain defensives and also deal a burst of damage around you. You'll then want to grab Font of Life so whenever you impair the movements of an enemy champion, you'll mark them and your allies will heal themselves whenever they attack them. Then move into Iron Skin so you gain plus 5 armor and also get increased healing from your consumables. Then finish off Resolve by taking Second Wind so whenever you take damage, you'll heal a portion of that damage back to yourself over time. You'll then want to move into Sorcery, grabbing Celerity so you get some extra movement speed so your roams are just a little bit quicker. Then finish off your runes by taking Scorch so your abilities do a bit of burn damage and make your harassment just a little bit stronger. For your summoner spells, you'll first want to grab Flash and then take either Ignite or Exhaust. Flash is required because Thresh is a fairly immobile champion and it can be used multiple times in a single game to save your life. You can also flash aggressively and then either flay the enemy or hook them with your death sentence to catch them off guard and engage from afar. If I'm with a strong early game AD carry then I'll usually grab ignite to add some extra damage in the lane and get it snowballing. If however you're with a weak early game AD carry or against a lot of assassins then instead make sure you take exhaust. Your passive is damnation and this allows you to collect souls that give you bonus ability power and bonus armor. Thresh's basic attacks do not use projectiles and his basic attack windup is only reduced by 0.25% per 1% bonus attack speed compared to the standard 1% per 1%. Enemies who die near Thresh drop souls for 8 seconds which he can then collect by either approaching them or by placing Dark Passage's lantern near them. Each collected soul permanently grants Thresh 0.75 bonus ability power, 0.75 bonus armor, and increases Dark Passage's shield strength and Flay's minimum bonus damage by 1. So this is a pretty strong ability because it will give you infinite scaling. As long as you're consistently picking up souls, this is going to make you a very strong champion in the mid and late game when you do have a bunch of stacks. Therefore, make sure you pick them up as much as you can so you get that bonus ability power and bonus armor and the increased shield strength and flay damage. Your Q ability is Death Sentence and this is your hooking ability that makes Thresh a playmaker. On first cast, after a 0.5 second delay, Thresh throws out his scythe in the target direction and forms a tether with the first enemy hit, dealing magic damage and stunning them for 1.5 seconds. Hitting an enemy reduces this cooldown by 3 seconds. On second cast, Thresh dashes to the tethered enemy, removing the stun but becoming able to attack again. So this is definitely your strongest ability because if you can consistently land your death sentence on enemies, you're going to get picks over and over again for your team and it's usually going to result in some kills. It doesn't do a lot of damage, however, but as long as your team can follow up, it will be some pretty free kills. Keep in mind, you can always death sentence to minions and monsters as well, so if you are trying to run away from a champion, if there is minions ahead of you, you can always do this as well. Your W ability is Dark Passage, and this is a really solid shielding ability that can collect souls and also save your allies. When activated, Thresh throws his lantern in the target direction, remaining for up to 6 seconds, revealing its immediate surroundings and collecting nearby souls for the duration, shielding the first ally to come near it for 4 seconds and automatically returning to Thresh if he moves more than 1500 units away from it. Allies can pick up the lantern by right clicking it, dashing to Thresh's location and shielding themselves for the same duration. So this is a pretty solid ability because it does of course shield you and also picks up souls if you do use it forward if it's unsafe to go to a location. The better part of the ability however is the fact that you can save your allies with it. If they get caught in a bad position and you're behind them, you can simply throw your lantern forward and if they right click it, they'll jump back to you and get completely out of danger. 
Your E ability is Flay, and this will knock people in a target direction and also slow them, and it also adds damage onto your autos. Passively, Thresh's basic attacks deal bonus magic damage, increasing with time spent not attacking enemy units or neutral monsters. When activated, Thresh sweeps his chain in a broad line towards the target direction, dealing damage to enemies hit, knocking them in the chain's direction, and slowing them afterwards for one second. So this is a really, really strong ability because it will make your auto attacks do a lot of damage if you are waiting between them and letting it charge up. It's also great when used offensively or defensively because you can either knock somebody towards you or away from you. You can even use this to interrupt things like Leona's jump. If she does try to jump onto you, flay the mid-jump and she won't get on top of you. Other than that, let this ability charge up and when it is reached maximum, make sure you hit and do a bunch of harassment. Your ultimate is the box, and this summons 5 spectral walls that slow enemies that run through them and deal a lot of damage to the first enemy hit. After a 0.75 second delay, Thresh summons 5 spectral walls, each lasting up to 5 seconds. Walls break upon contact with an enemy champion, dealing magic damage and slowing by 99% for 2 seconds. Enemy champions hitting any wall beyond the first take no damage, but are slowed at least for 1 second. So this is a pretty strong ability because it does have a 99% slow, which is pretty damn significant. You can always use your flay ability as well to make sure you knock people through the walls so at least one target will take the damage. I'll usually use my Q ability to get onto the enemy champion and then use my ultimate and flay them through it. It's also really strong in teamfights because if you drop this in the middle of a teamfight, people are pretty much going to have no option but to go through it. For your skill order, you first want to put a point into your ultimate whenever you can at 6, 11, and 16. You'll then want to put 3 points into your E ability just so your auto attacks are much more effective and your flay damage is also going to be pretty significant as well. This is going to make your lane phase a lot more effective. You'll then want to focus on maxing your Q ability next because you want to be able to use your Q ability as much as you can in the mid and the late game and find picks as much as possible. Then of course save your W ability for last but make sure you take a point in it at level 3 so you can actually save your allies and shield people and collect souls. During the lane phase, you want to try to keep your AD carry protected at all times with your strong peeling and dark passage. You have a ton of different ways to get them out of a bad situation, so make sure you're positioned correctly so you can pull them out of danger. You should also be looking to land your death sentence on the enemy so you can trade a bunch of free damage and possibly get an easy kill. You can use your flay to knock the enemy backwards and slow them so landing your death sentence is a lot easier. Don't be too aggressive if you do have a weak early game AD carry. Focus on helping them farm so they'll be stronger in the mid and late game. In teamfights, there's two main things you can do and depends on the champions on your team. They are appealing for your carries and being a frontliner while trying to crowd control high kill priority targets. I'll usually hang around my AD carry or AP carry to peel from them when necessary so they can do the damage that they need to do. If the enemy team has fed carries and nobody can get onto them, then you may want to try and stop their damage. In a normal team fight, though, you want to peel for your carries as much as you can and get crowd controls onto the enemies. Now let's look at some of your hard matchups, and first up is Janna. Janna's going to be really hard for you because she has multiple disengages, so if you do get on top of one of her carries, she can simply push you off with her own ultimate. She can also keep herself or her AD carry shielded throughout the lane phase and negate the damage from your flay. Try your best to be aggressive because it doesn't do a lot of damage. Try to get on top of her and stay there. For your next hard matchup, I've got Leona. She's a champion that's great at counter-engaging, so if you do get on top of one of her allies, she can just simply engage onto you and completely stop you. She's generally going to be a much tankier champion that does a lot of damage in the early game, but at least she's not a big playmaker like you are. Try to stop her dash as much as you can throughout the lane phase with your flay ability, and then go on to her AD carry. Don't fight a Leona. For your next hard matchup, I've got Sona. Sona is a champion that has a lot of poke damage and a lot of sustain as well, so any damage you do is going to be negated by her heals, and she will be poking the crap out of you at the same time, and you have no sustain to deal with it. The only way to win this lane is to either get on top of her or her AD carry, and make sure you delete them. In long drawn out trades, you're pretty much always going to lose. For the last hard matchup, I've got Tarek. This guy's a lot like Leona in the fact that he has a great counter engage, but he also has an ultimate that can completely stop your all ins, and he does have some nice lane sustain as well. You'll have to try to burst his AD carry down as much as you can because Tarek is a very tanky champion, and in long drawn out trades, he's going to easily win them because of his heals and his ultimate. Alright, let's finish off this guide with our item build that starts with either a relic shield, health potion, and a warding totem, or a coin, health potions, and a warding totem. For your core build, you want to go for a Face of the Mountain, Ruby Sightstone, and a Locket. This will make you a very tanky champion right off the start, and you're going to have an AoE shield from the Locket for your team to help with any AoE ultimates that the enemy team may have. 
Usually I'll rush a sight stone as soon as possible and then go right for the face of the mountain. For your boot options, you have the boots and mobility if you plan to spend a lot of the game roaming, ninja tabbies against high AD teams, and merc treads against high AP and CC heavy teams. For the item pool, you first have the redemption. This will give you some really nice sustain, 10% CDR, and some bonus health. The better part of the item, however, is the fact that you can call down a heal which will give your team a lot of extra sustain. Next up, we have the Knight's Vow. This will give you some more bonus health, some armor, and 10% CDR again. This will allow you to attach to a partner, making yourself a bit more tanky, and you will also get some nice healing from your partner as well. For your next item, you have the Righteous Glory. This is going to give you some more tankiness as well, but also a really nice activation, which will help you engage since you get some bonus movement speed. If you're against an attack speed heavy lineup, you could always go for a Frozen Heart. This will reduce the enemy's attack speed and also give you a bunch of armor and mana at the same time. Next up, we have the Zeke's Convergence. This item also has some really nice tanky stats, but when you activate your ultimate, it also summons a Frost Storm, making it even stronger. If you're looking to pick up some magic resist, you could always go for a Mikhail's as well. You'll also be able to use this item to get your teammates out of a crowd control, which is going to be really strong against crowd control heavy teams. Then finally, if you need all out armor, you could always go for a thorn mail. This will give you an absolute ton of armor and also reflect damage back to the enemy. For my example full build, however, I take the core build, get some boots and mobility, and then a redemption and a knight's vow. You're going to be a very tanky champion that can use multiple shields and heals and can also attach yourself to a teammate. But that covers everything I've got for Support Thresh in Season 8. If you guys did enjoy the video, please make sure you drop a like and subscribe because now I'm making daily videos. I also have a link to all my social medias in the video description below as well, so make sure you check that out. I do have a Discord server, so please feel free to drop by and ask anything League of Legends related. But other than that, thank you guys so much for checking out the video. I really do appreciate it, so take it easy, have a good day, and peace.